Hello everybody, today we are reviewing how to perform a Pails and Rails. And the reason is that Pails and Rails has a few different components and it's important to understand how to perform each component individually so that we can get the most out of this exercise. As with any complex skill, we want to break down the smaller elements first so we know how to perform them and then we can combine them together. So if this is your first time performing a Pails and Rails or you just want to review how to perform the Pales Rails or to make sure you're performing it in the best way possible, this video should be helpful for you. So we're going to practice in the 90-90 position just because it's one of the most common positions you're going to find uh, if you're looking online or taking classes. 90-90 position, just to quickly review, is here what we call where, if you look from this angle, the hip to my knee to my ankle makes a 90 degree angle and the front hip as well the hip to my knee makes a 90 degree angle here now we're going to do this exercise for the front hip so i'm not interested if you don't feel comfortable in this position or you can't keep your body upright you can adjust your rear, your back foot so you want to move it here backwards bring the foot in adjust the angle of your ankle that's all fine we're focusing on this front hip so let's first review all the parts. So what tissues are we going to be working and when are we working them? So if you look at internal external rotation, this movement is external rotation. This movement is internal rotation. So as my foot, my front foot is in this position here, this is external rotation. So then we talk about pails and rails, the pails tissue in this case is the tissue along the outside of my leg so the progressive angle the tissue that's being lengthened is this tissue so in this position what that looks like is the tissue on the outside it's facing down in contact with the floor the rails tissue is on the opposite side is the tissue that's being shortened in a shortened position the regressive angle which is the tissue on this side, on the inside of my thigh and on the inside of my, of my uh, calf and leg. Okay, so those are the two tissues that we're going to be working at different times. Then the next part we want to go over is the stretch. So the first part of any Pales Rails set is the stretch. We want to spend two minutes or more ideally in a stretched position. Now, as a beginner, we want to break this down. Maybe if it's your first time, two minutes is a long time. You might want to break this down into spending 30 seconds instead of two minutes, just to get comfortable with it. But the most important thing is with any position is to find the proper stretch. So in this case, we're working our right hip, external rotation. So you want to find a position where we get that stretch. Some cues that might help you for this position is you can perform it completely bent forward here, just trying to bring your chest to the ground. And what you should be feeling is some sort of stretch on the muscles on this lower part of this glute, hip area, thigh area, okay? Now take that idea, that feeling. Now imagine you're sitting upright, your foot may be in a different position, that's fine. We're working on this front hip. Imagine somebody is pulling your stomach, your belly button forward. Imagine you have a, a string hooked in here and I'm pulling your belly button forward. Now at the same time, imagine I have someone's hooked a string on your belt loop back here and is pulling you upwards. So into this position, belly button forward, butt starts to point up, body's tall, now start to slowly bring your body forward while keeping what we'd call a very upright posture, okay? And you should be trying to find a stretch in that same position as when you were in this completely folded position, okay? So then you can move around, explore where you feel the most stretch. Maybe it's more to the right, maybe it's more to the left, but you're trying to find your end range. That's the key, not just staying upright when we're trying to get into our deepest position into the end range position. So the first element you can play with as a beginner or if you're new to this exercise is just spending less than two minutes here, okay? Then let's talk about irradiation. Assume you've spent two minutes here now, 
two minutes have passed or whatever time you've deemed appropriate for you. It could be 30 seconds at the beginning. Irradiation. When we talk about irradiation, imagine you're taking your hand here, squeeze, take your left hand, squeeze your right hand. Only use the muscles in your left hand to squeeze your right hand as hard as you can, but only use these muscles. Now add the muscles in your forearm to squeeze your hand. Now add the muscles in your bicep, in your left bicep to squeeze your right hand. So you're working all these muscles now. Now maximally contract and squeeze your right hand without breaking it. What you should have felt is that you were much stronger and able to contract more and squeeze your ha right hand harder by using all your muscles as opposed to only using your muscles in your, in your left hand. So the concept of radiation is going to be as we're doing these, these pails and rails is that we are contracting the muscles throughout our body. It's not that we're just working our hip. We're using irradiation throughout our body to help us contract more and work harder during this exercise. So what we always want people to do is to take a breath in, take the air, try and pack it into the lower part of your abdomen before you start the pails contraction. So the next part is the pails. Now, some elements that you can play with as a beginner to make to familiarize yourself with this exercise is the time and the intensity so normally a pales contraction is a gradual increase in our maximum voluntary contraction so we'd start zero right now i'm at zero and then 10 to 30 to 50 to 80 to 100. so we can play with the amount of time that we spend uh, in progressing from one percent to a hundred percent Okay, so as we said earlier, the pales tissue in this case is here. This is the pales tissue on the underside, the outside of my thigh touching the ground here. And so now the idea would be to push isometrically against, this, against the floor. The idea being going this way, trying to scoop my ankle into the ground, but obviously I can't because it's the ground. I can't push through the ground. That's the pales contraction. Okay, so what we're going to do is push down and we'd start with a low level contraction, 10% to 30 to 50 to 80 to 100. So the time we can play with is how much time am I spending at 10%, 30%, 50%. To make it easier as a beginner, we could start with just 10, 30, 50, 80, 100 as opposed to spending 10, 30, 50, 80, 100, okay? So those are elements you can play with to adjust the intense, the, the time you're, you're doing it. Intensity is another aspect you can play with. So there's no fixed rule saying you have to go from 1% to 100%. At the beginning, I recommend you familiarizing yourself with this activity, this exercise by maybe only going to 50%. Start at 1, 10, 20, 30, 50, 40, 50, and then just stay there. There's no rule that you have to go to 100. Especially at the beginning, you're better off practicing the right contraction before overloading yourself, overwhelming yourself by going to 100%, okay? So those are the two elements. You can combine those. You could do a very slow or very fast ramping from 10 to 50% perhaps. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and hold at 50. Or you could do a slower one, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Then you can maybe go to 70 the next time you practice this, then to 80, building up to learning what a 100% contraction feels like. So the pales contraction was this way, moving, trying to move our foot this way into the ground. For the rails, we have similar options to play with to adjust this exercise. But the most important one, whereas pales was gradual, the, intense, the intensity is usually meant to be uh, ballistic in nature. So we're going to be ballistic when we do the rails contraction. What is the rails contraction? The rails contraction is using these muscles here. Imagine you're trying to bring your ankle to your chest. So if I was in my end range position out here, I'd be trying to bring my ankle to my chest. That would be the feeling we're working on. Obviously, 
we, it's not going to happen. If you are able to lift off like right now, it's because you're not in your end range. And the purpose of this exercise is to train your end range. So if you see yourself lifting, that means you're not in your end range. So I'll be feeling like I'm lifting my ankle to my chest is the feeling I'm working on contracting these muscles. Okay. But normally a rails contraction would be immediately after the pails as hard as you can, a hundred percent. But if we're learning and we're new to this activity, maybe we want to start with also ramping 10, 30, 50, 80, 100. So we can change the way we contract. So we don't have to go ballistic in nature. When I say ballistic, I mean immediately as hard as we can. We can also do similar to the pails, gradual. And then the other two elements we can adjust are the time and the intensity. As mentioned for the pails and rails, for the pails, for the rails, it's the same thing. The amount of time I spend at under tension, so I could be spending less time at 100%, more time at 100%. I could be gradually spending less time at 10, 30, 50, 80, 100. So that's the variable you can play with. And the intensity. At the beginning, although the goal is to contract at 100%, you can do the same thing. Stop at 50 at the beginning. Just learn and become familiar with this position. For a lot of people, it's not they're not used to spending a lot of time in this type of position. So for the rails, you have three options. Ballistic versus gradual. So gradual making it easier, the time and the intensity. And for pails, you would also have the time and the intensity you can play with. After that, then you've completed the rails. A common mistake or thing people do is that they then, oh, okay, let me relax. That was really intense. Let me relax out of that for a second. But you really missed a huge opportunity because the purpose of, of what you've just been doing for the last couple minutes is to explore and enter a new range you hadn't been able to access before. So you're then what I call you're trying to find, find comfort in the discomfort. So you're trying to stay in this uncomfortable position and create as much comfort as you can through um, breathing. So breathing in for two, out for four, trying to calm your nervous system, trying to become comfortable in this uncomfortable situation before ideally repeating the pails and the rails again, and then trying to pull yourself deeper into the stretch. Okay. Now, if this is your first time, one full set is more than enough. Over time, you maybe want to build towards two sets. So when I work with clients, often the first time we spend a lot of time just understanding what does the pails contraction meant to feel like? What is the rails contraction meant to feel like? What is irradiation meant to feel like? So instead of just pushing with your ankle, when, we, when you're at 50% tension of maximum voluntary contraction, your whole body's at 50%. It's not this, just that you're pushing with your leg and everything else is just loose and relaxed. So it's the full body engagement. That's why it's important to break this all down. Okay. So now to finish, let's just review the whole process. So we get into the position. In this case, we're 90, 90 working the front leg. We're going to find a stretch. Imagining we're pulling our belly button forward. Someone's lifting my butt up and going as far forward as I can while feeling a stretch. I may explore the positions that I need. That I, that I feel the most stretch in. For me, I feel it the most here. This is close to, this is my end range about here. I would spend up to two minutes, if this is a, my first time doing this, maybe I would spend less time. After that, I'm gonna irradiate. Breathe in, pack the air into, into my lower abdomen, into my stomach. Now I'm gonna start the pails contraction. We're gonna start, I could start with 10%. And depending on the intensity, I can gradually increase to 30%, to 50%, to 80%. So let's say I'm starting at 10%. I'm kicking my ankle into the ground, into the ground, my knee into the ground, trying to scoop this way. Then I move, keep that going, 30%, 50%. Now, maybe I stay at 50%. There's no rule saying I have to go to 80 or to 100. If I'm new to this, I might just stay here for a bit. And that might, I might call today there, or I'm like, okay, no, I want to try and combine that with a rails contraction. Now you would do the opposite. Try and lift your ankle to your chest. You could do it ballistically, meaning trying to as hard as you can, hundred percent. Or if you're new to this exercise, I recommend maybe just, oh, 10%. Let's just play around with going back and forth 
between a pales and a rails contraction. Okay, I'll push down for 10, then I'll lift up. So now I'm lifting up 10% of maximum contraction, 30%, 50, I'm gonna stay at 50. I don't wanna go to 100 today, that's for example. And then after that, while I'm doing this, I'm trying to pull myself deeper into the stretch. That's the final part. Using this opportunity to try and pull yourself deeper into the stretch. Okay, and now I'm gonna find comfort in the, dis in the discomfort, trying to stay here and breathe and become comfortable. And I might call it a day there, or if I've built up to this now, I might continue a second round of pails and rails, pressing down. If you're doing it the second time, you don't have to repeat the two minute stretch. You just wait until you feel you're fully recovered and are ready to, to perform a full set again. And you push down 10%, 30%, 50, 80, 100. Try to push the ankle down, the knee down, and then the opposite rails would be lifting up. Depending on your level, maybe you want to do it gradual to begin with. So those, and then, then I might relax, and that could be the end of the exercise. So those are the, the elements you can play with, and I really recommend you take the time to master each part individually before combining them. Learn how to make a really good pales contraction, really working this tissue here, or whatever position, whatever position you're working in. Then combine, learn how to really contract, make a rails contraction. If you're able to do, if you're doing a pales, uh, rails contraction, or any 100% effort contraction, pales or rails, and you're doing it for more than 10 or 15 seconds, it's not really your maximum contraction. If you're doing a 100% contraction, it should be really intense and you should be only able to hold it for about 10 to 15 seconds and that's it, okay? But that takes practice and time to get used to because we're not used to doing that normally, okay? So that is, those are some of the elements we can play with to adjust the intensity and to learn how to perform a pails and rails.